Today we're talking about your life set and how to create building blocks. How can you make it in such a way that it will work every time, namely when you're performing live. I guess if that's today's video, let's go do it right now. <music> Hey, hello, welcome. I'm in a location and thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Hang out till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about the challenge that we have. I'll tell you about our Patreon, Discord, the new patrons that we have. And I'll also tell you about the Mixer project. So there's a lot of information, so stay tuned for that. Your life set building blocks. Now I want to go back to something that I said on the previous video. Making music and finishing tracks boils down to analyzing the track and chopping it into three different segments in order of importance. A, B and C. Having said that though, a lot of people still debate like what is A, what is B, what is C. So today I'm going to go over the building blocks. The way I've set up my life set is in a way that everything can interact with anything else. So I'm not per se creating complete tracks, I'm making them in a modular kind of fashion. So the drums in my drum beats on my octa track can go from very mildly to more aggressive, depending on where I am. So that means that the sequences that play over the top have a different feeling if I'm playing a daytime festival or a daytime gig as opposed to a nighttime club sort of like on the ground or even an after party setting where things need to go a little bit more gritty and grimy. So what I've done is I've looked at different building blocks on how to work it. So I've structured the setup in different segments, which means it's very easy for me to do the ABC stuff. And also it overcomes writer's block because you might not feel uh, if you wake up in the morning and you want to make a lead line but your head says drums then obviously it could be a tedious process trying to force yourself into a certain direction and not everybody's got all the time in the world so it wouldn't it be cool to just like be productive all the time so that's why I think the building blocks are very important so drums, music, leads, sound design, everything can be spaced out in different things so that means that if you look at the manual the manual probably tells you the Octatrack can do this, that breast milk from a virgin can probably turn water into wine. I'm not using it for all that it can do. I'm only using it for one specific task because in my grand scheme of things, in my building blocks, that's where I need it to go. That's what I want it to do. And otherwise, I'll get sidetracked. And sidetracked means losing time. Losing time means not being productive, not being productive, you know, no, there you go. So that's how I set up my life set. Let's go over the structure of the building blocks and hopefully this is helpful to you. Now, if you're ready, let's go do it. Let's do it right now. Hey, if you're new here, welcome. This is my setup. This is how I'm going to do it today. Octrack, taking care of drums. MC1, taking care of the MIDI information because I've got the subsequent sitting here. I've got the OB6 sitting here. Then there's a 1010 black box that's connected to the Octrack as soon as this runs. Everything gets um, uh, a pulse from the um, multi clock right here. It sends a pulse on channel one to the MPC1. So that's taking care of the MIDIs. Then it's. Um, uh, sends on channel 2, it sends the octa track on its way, and then the octa track will just uh, uh, in turn get the 1010 black box to go. Now, as I said, building blocks, let's go over it pretty simple. Yeah, I'll start with the drums pretty much uh, on the 1010, but we'll get to that. On the 1010, there's some stuff happening there as well. I am a hybrid producer, I will work. Um, on my computer and prepare samples or midis beforehand because I think it might be a bit tedious and time consuming to do it on the door. You can, but it's sometimes, you know, you want to get there fast. So I love to just prepare stuff beforehand and I'll just can go in a little bit surgically. And then once I've set it up, I'll swap midis out. So if I play something with a plugin on my computer, I'll probably just like have uh, in mind how it's going to turn out once we're going to get to this setup now. The Novation Noise Control would usually get connected to the MPC-1. I've not connected it now because I'm not MIDI mapping anything away. That's going to come in future videos, uh, how we're going to set this up. But for now, there's only three things that this thing does. Some sounds are coming from the uh, MPC. Um, it's got on channel one, which is uh, not, uh, which is the sub. So let's say sub here. 
sub and then we'll go to this is the ob6 on channel two channel three is something that the akai plays and then the output of the akai is rooted through the asset box three so anything that plays here can be filtered down i can filter it on the akai but then you have to just like for instance i've got this uh, hype synth now with a pitch noise rise i have to just go out of there go into program edit select the filter and then just go there so if i want to do something else and then i can map away but the akai is notorious for losing its midi mapping sometimes i don't want it so i will go in the old school way output into the filter filter on the desk there's this delay also this delay that's what the um subsequent goes into the uh, digital delay dd7 and that's that then we've got like um, the ob6 here that plays yeah just two um simple oscillators nothing too fancy but for the pads for that 80s kind of vibe that i got on this track that i'm going to play in a second that's what happens so we're going to start with the a category the drums now as i said there's a few themes that i want to have play that I want to, one that I need for this to work, and then there's uh, some arpeggios for the sound that I'm doing. I'm mainly doing a progressive house slash melodic techno, or sometimes techno. I've set it up that the first five tracks on the octave track are always going to be drums. They play this. Let's turn this on. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It plays this. So pretty simple. Let's go over the drums, right? I'm thinking if I need if I need drums, what do I want? I love to have some musical information already embedded on my drums. If something breaks down or this thing doesn't want to play ball or whatever, and it's not playing any midis, I just want to make sure that I've got something embedded. So what I've done is I've got my kick drum with a bit of noise on the end because I love. It's to be a little bit gritty. This hails of my time sampling stuff of records. It's just sometimes got a little bonus when you sample the sound. It wasn't always as clean, but it made up for the sound. Now, I think that in this day and age, with everything being as clean as hell, you know, you miss a little bit of character. So I, I love to stick a little bit of noise on there. So I'm not going to go into meticulously. If I wanted to, I could just say like, you know what? Let's uh, take that off towards the end, which means that on this sample here, And I can even get say like, you know what? Let's go into for the envelope, which means it's out of here. Go to the envelope page, which is here. It's on the amp page. So there's no kick. But it doesn't bug me, so I'm gonna leave it. Okay, second one is, and this, funny enough, is a drum and bass loop that I had. And I chopped it up so I took every element that I needed out of the drum and bass loop, not a character. Um, and then I chopped it up within um, uh, Studio Ones that I work with. So this is the hats. The hats are not as high as you would probably think because I filtered them down because they're very bright and in your face. So I've used a filter for this. And the filter goes instead of 127, which is full range, it goes to 120, no, sorry, 14, 15, something. Nice. Dab -dab 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 -dab. I'm on 125 BPM, by the way. Okay. Now, this is where... First loop. Because I want a bit of a, of a groove. The clap is already embedded here. So, I can build it up. This is pretty nice and sparse. And then... I keep this in a loop, yeah? I'm not even going to go for the full four uh, beats in the at bar. It's just going one, two, start, boom, start, boom, start. So it gives uh, a sense of the track speeding up. Now, this is where the musical information goes. I've deliberately pitched that tom in the tone of the rest of the music is what you're going to hear. Okay, so drums. right so how i set it up mostly mostly if i'm using a track like this is i need a few things um i need pads for my track i need an arpeggio for my track i need uh, a lead line or some sort of a gimmick or some sort of thing that stands out and i need a bass line that's how i look at tracks now no how however long the track is going to be those things need to be embedded there so drums bass 
arpeggio, pads, and some sort of a lead line. I will probably not have different things, you know, like players on the field. You don't want to have people sit in the, in the same position because they're going to get in the way of each other. So now, this is the drums then, and then we're going to move on to the bass. And the bass and the drums, they do something um, very interestingly as well. So I've only got four tracks on the octave track, right? So track five is another hat. So this one, those two are never going to sit in, this, in the same sort of like frequency range. I'll try to space them out a little bit. Number five is a little bit louder. So, nice. Track six is where we're going to start playing some sort of a theme or a tune. Now, why didn't I do that on the Akai? And on the ABC structure, I always keep saying like, okay, this, is your A category. I mean, this could be a tribally, housey, bouncy track. You just play it, it's cool. You don't have to play anything else for, in order for people to dance, if that's the aim. But um, you have to rely on things not breaking down. So I stick something of a theme already on this machine so that if this plays by itself, I have some time to sort stuff out if something goes A-wire. That happens sometimes with dollar sets. So, and on six, we've got this. Hypnotizing, right? Again, you know the trick that I do with um, the crossfader kick out. And on seven, I stuck the arpeggio. Very important because this arpeggio, I need it. I always need it. It gives the track a little bit more of a vibe. I'll stick it in there in a second. Back in. And this is the progressive bass. Let's stop it. Let's play it from um, the multi-clock. So that's here. I'm using the multi-clock because I want stuff to just like be on time. If I use a 303 or something else that has an external sequencer, you would like to have uh, the, a central clock that can address it, right? Okay, cool. Now, I have muted on my DM12 uh, Midas mixer, I've muted the, um, the OB6 because this thing is ostinato. We're going to stick on the same sort of like bass line all the time. Do, 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 do. Nice. Yeah, I'm digging this. So, track six is where the music is. I can filter it down. Let's play the bass line. So now I've started the MPC, and you can clearly hear that it's So now there's a theme in that's playing. Usually, this is just the basics, nature of everything. But this invokes uh, guitar solos, vocals to be sung. Um, it's too open. It's too open and it needs something else. So, okay. So now you've got something, oh yeah, we're going somewhere. This, this, could, this has more longevity than if I wouldn't play this. It doesn't do much, plays the same thing, but it's some sort of a bass note. And then if I want to play this theme, I can open it up a little bit. So, you know, open this up. That's my first sort of like drop riser in order to invoke a little bit of adrenaline. Yep, gonna go back in. Bam, bam. Nice. Now, this is the first thing. This bass line, as I said, it does something on a big time vibe, but if I go to a different bank, for instance, Now all of a sudden the bass plays itself. This is how you can transition as well, see? So this element can always switch under whatever is playing, right? Do the same thing. There's a drum roll even here. Well, there you go. So, different vibes. This is, well, if I'm playing a daytime kind of vibe, and then the other one is playing more of an adrenaline vibe for later on in the day, early night, or maybe later in the night. So that's bank number 10, here we go. You can hear the clap is a little bit more in your face, and then that sound bam, 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 that's constantly, um, yeah, it's kicking your butt. This is 
um, bank number 10 because in the Akai next sequence place I'm using four bars for one track so on my bank A it means one two three four tracks songs you know that are spaced out of the four sequences bank B similar bum 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 and then here you go so that's eight nine ten we're on ten right now so everything is organized so my building blocks work in in, in just in that similar fashion so bank 10 which is now sequence 37 38 39 and 40 that's where I need to just like think like what do I want to do usually I'll keep this ostinato pattern here and then if I'm going to add more um, melodics I'll switch it over to the next one I've not done it now but that's how I usually would do it now arpeggio here as well Taking the kick out, because I'm always introducing something. One, two, one, two, three, go. Six, filter it down. Nice. Now, on the Tantan black box, that's where I play impacts, risers, atmospheric stuff. This is my C category business, right? So let's play an impact. One, two, three, like so. You can hear clearly. And then there's a riser towards the end of it. There's 16 bars. So I don't have to worry about this anymore. If I was to add drum rolls and other stuff there, this will just run. Right? Now it's small riser. Sorry for the EDM kind of vibe, but just for sake of uh, <laughs> argument, you know what's happening, right? Okay, and then it loops again. Now, take out the kick. What I've done also, and that's how I would usually work it, this arpeggio is also staying on the same sort of like root note. However, listening to what the OB6 plays here, the OB6 is playing a chord scheme that goes major into minor, minor, and then it goes back into major. I love it. So this can build up the track a little bit more, but it would be cool that the arpeggio does the same thing, right? Okay, now what I've done, let's take this out for a second. You go to the arpeggio, which is sitting on seven. Stop it, you. So, and uh, this MIDI fighter here is taking care of um, the black box, so I can launch those background clips there. Okay, let's go to track seven. Track seven is only playing one bar. However, if I'm going to go in and I'm going to stick this one on four bars because it's four bars long, you get this. So you can hear now that it follows what's happening over there on the OB6 with the pad. Get out of there, play the kick. And meanwhile, my subsequent stays on that same path. I can opt to just play different things. It's something that I would probably use later on if I will switch to a different pattern. Then I'm on a different sequence on the MPC. Then I'll take out this bass line. I mean, I will stay on the same track will stay on the same preset but I will not play anything so that I get to play the stuff myself which is cool or you can copy it that's how I pretty much do it mostly um, yeah so same thing you open this up pick out get everything else going and now the track is going right but I can just go to a different pattern all together again. Let's see what we can do with this uh, black box. Got a riser here, like this. Mm -hmm. 
Not so loud, let's see if we can turn it up a little bit. Nice one. So I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff anymore. I just map it away. And then I've got a filter on it as well. If I want to take it out of the way, quick, fast, I'll just filter it down. That's how you do it, boom. Okay, let's take the ARP out. And then you go back to the track. That's why you leave your root note to play on the steady bit. One, two, three. You can use that right here to make an impact. So, everything is steps. Two. One, two, three. Back in. And that's pretty much how I set it up. I mean, I can make it more difficult, but these are the elements that I think, I think those are the building blocks that, that are needed. You don't really need anything else. I mean, you can make it crazier, um, but this should be the basic, basically, right? This should be the basis of, of everything. So, two tracks just for music on the octave track, so wind it down again. Take out the kick, go to seven. Function and page. Stick this back on 16. So go back out. So now I know that the arpeggio is constantly sticking on the same thing again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and. So that's how you can do it. What I would usually do is copy this pattern over to pattern two and then have it play the longer pattern there, so I don't have to do this manually constantly because function, this, and then hitting it, that's just obviously going to be too many controls for me to use, so I'll probably automate it, but you would love some stuff to be live as well. I do believe that sometimes it's, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you don't want to be just standing here and just playing with the filters and stuff. Okay, that's what we have, right? Probably, let's uh, stop a quick fast. I'm going to, um, copy this over, this one is 37, so I'll go in, say, okay, this is the track name, Elemental Structures is what I call this track, I'll go in, I'll say, copy the sequence, go from 37 to 38, 38, yes, and I'll say, do it, give it another name, uh, 2, so, so do it, do it, bam, so now I know that this 38's got the same thing. Now I'll go, like I told you, to the subsequent, and I'll take out all the notes that are playing right here. Right, so I'll select them all. See that those double notes even. So, okay, I'll just, I'll do it real easy, so cut. So, now I've got the whole trick that I told you, so, and I'll go to the next sequence page, which is my performance page. So from here, I'm saying like, okay, Nice. Now I know already that I'm on on that page. One, two, and three. Switch over. See, so I can play and I go back out. That's how I just. You know, and it resets itself. So it gives me um, the kind of vibe that I can play stuff live and have to stop sequence if I've got a very um, heavy sort of like uh, bass line that I've programmed that's impossible for me to play as I'm not a keyboardist per se. I mean, I can play, but come on, you know. What I mean? Then I'll just go over there. I'm gonna take out track six. Go back in. Yep. Let's copy this pattern over as well. Let's stop it quick fast. So, I'm going to say pattern. I'm just going to copy the pattern, get out of there. Copy pattern. 
So, paste the pattern. So now we're on the second pattern place. Place the same thing. <clears throat> what we're going to do here is go to seven, go bump. So now we've got the whole. Nice. Got the one. You can hear that there's now revolves. See? So now we've got a music structure going, right? On to the next one, and there we go. See, and that's how I set it up now. Can you imagine? You've got 16 patterns here, so you can just like <clears throat> go completely crazy. Even if you're using the parts, then you can even have different sounds play whatever, whenever you switch uh, to a different uh, uh, pattern. So that's cool, right? So we're on one. So what we're going to do is stop this. And now I had a trick where I had like the MPC tell the Octatrack when the switch. So if I would go over here, probably this would go to the, uh, to the next uh, uh, pattern as well. But I found that it's sometimes easier to just like do it this way. If you stick musical information on the first building block here, which is what I got here, I mean, cool. So this is my, huh? the, the Akai gives me a little bit of freedom. I can just like play whatever I want. Um, and another step I would say in your building blocks is if you just try, if you're starting to lose your uh, way, then it's just cool to have a mixer where it's just old school. If you don't want to hear it, turn it down. You know what I mean? That helps as well. So cool. Now what we're going to do is, this is why I love the, the multi-clock. My point being, okay, baseline starts through and so I now have control over when certain elements of my electronic orchestra, of my band, my band members will start, right? Now, simple. Okay. And what I love about the MPC-1 is that the sequence length can be extensively long. Now it's only four bars, but it can be eight bars, 16 bars, 32 bars, but I'll use next sequence space. So what we're going to do is switch over. This one will run and this one will run as well. And I'm not playing the bass line right now because obviously I don't want to have this uh, play, but you have to understand that this is playing right here. So if we, were, if we were to do it the way we should do it, stop it, we'll go to the first one, we'll play this. And then you have to go in, stop it, and do the same thing with the OB6. So the OB6 is also playing something. What I love about the uh, um, uh, Akai is we're not going to delete notes, same as here. We're going to just like say like sequence length, which is now the full span of the, of the beat is now going to be four beats, which means it loops one, two, three, four. So now it plays. which sounds like kaka, but you can understand it if you, you're easy to edit. So what we'll do, let's edit it quick, fast. Stop, say, edit start, so cool. And just like select those and say edit end. We'll make them all longer and now it plays. So you got your nice sort of like pad flow already there, right? Okay, now let's do, let's start it, stop. And first pattern as well. And filter down, use this. That sound that we had in the beginning, go to six. The trick is, if I was to set this track up, right? I mean, let's start from scratch, yeah? If I was to just like uh, start this track and say like, okay, how are you going to work this into uh, a workable set? The elements are, I've got this, the pads here. Now I've got my two 
uh, different uh, sequences already set up. This is how you probably build it up. There's a lot of stuff I do beforehand because you don't want to be doing this live. You can, but you know, it's best to just like sort certain things off. So I've got my, my background flow here. There's an atmosphere that plays this. If I take everything off, I think it plays. Goes up. This needs to go away. That's where I want. Okay, and it starts again like nice. To, goes down, goes up. Nice. Yeah? So, let's arm it. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start the track pretty simple. Turning off this, turning off. Uh, I'll probably start with my arp. Okay, start with that. This is a cool vibe to start the track, I think. So, think an element. So, I only have to focus on this one machine first, right? So, this is how I'm going to look at how am I going to do it live. Wow. Okay. Let's speed it up. So, I'll start with a the kick then. So, very simple. I keep the drums on one side, I keep the music on the other side. So, I know that I don't accidentally hit something. I'll start immediately with the hats, two and five. Knowing that three and four are going to be the loops, right? You hit function, you hit three, you hit four, you see two, plus signs coming in, right? One, and then you release it and go in. Oh, track is on its way. Obviously you would not do this in 32 bars, you'll extend this out. The next thing now, when you've got your A category vibe going is get people dancing and you need a little bit of low end frequency content in there. So that's the baseline. The baseline is next. From the minute you got the foundation where people are dancing, that's when you try to hypnotize them, right? Kick out, thinking two, three. Now, the baseline, sitting over here. One, two, three, back in and. That's your next foundation. So the track is on its way. You worry about chord changes later. Okay, what's next? You can go with this sound, but this sound is a lead kind of sound, so this is the B category. I would not stick it in there. And this is much like, um, yeah, once you advance to that level, you can go back. So I I'm track six, that, that, that sound that we had. I'm going to play that later. Now take out the kick and play the pads. That we have neatly stocked on this one chord here. Since I didn't put you all on the screen last week, I'm going to do it again. And that's one more patron as well. So I'd like to say welcome to Vincent Timisela. I'd like to say welcome to Grand Mal. I'd like to say welcome to Ifeani Alimba. Uh, and I'd like to say welcome to Stefan Durr. Welcome, those are my new patrons and they're following me at patreon.com. Splash! And a little kitchen. I've got Patreon connected to Discord. Discord is where the magic happens. I threw out a remix contest for one of my tracks that I'm going to release. Not so sure where. We're talking to a few labels and we might even put it out ourselves. It just depends what I sang on the track. Hallelujah. No, well, not like that, but I mean, um, and people are remixing that. And I pick, I'm going to pick two remixes that I think that are going to just like uh, be uh, uh, well enough, cool enough uh, to release also. So that's a cool thing. Uh, Patreon support platform, you can help uh, out the channel, I'm trying to make better content. Everything you see is just pretty much what, um, what, yeah, what, what comes out of my, my uh, brain, thinking of what you could uh, use if you are thinking of um, going into the dollars route. So that's Patreon. Um, there's going to be um, the master segment for the mixer that's going to get like uh, um, built up now. It's really cool. Uh, I know that um, we're ordering transistors. I've, I've ordered a bunch of stuff this week at Mauser, which is cool. So I'm so excited for that. So we're going to set up the master sec section for the mixer. Um, I spoke about it at length and then um, COVID hit and there were no parts. It was just like a, a proce process that, that took longer than I uh, anticipated. But um, yeah, we're back on that. So what, what, what I think is uh, in the dollars realm, yeah, for us dollars producers. Um, I don't think that there is a mixer catered to performing live. Now, all the different boxes have a different sound characteristic. But what I found is that if you um, 
work a DJ mixer, so I used to work with an Allen and Heath and just like a, uh, take a few uh, DIs or tube DIs or whatever, you can get a certain sound. And I like to have that embedded on the mixer so that you don't have to think like, does the MPC sound the same as the Octatrack? Because a lot of people that came to my studio with their live set, they make absolutely amazing music, but they're not mixing engineers. So the levels are always a bit off. So I'm trying to maybe get that um, sorted out in the mixer so you don't have to worry about that too much that every um, channel has got ample headroom it's got enough stuff for you to work with and you don't really have to think like okay do i need to be a mastering the mixing engineer now i just want to perform i think the mixer should take care of that so there's a lot of stuff that we have embedded on the channels in terms of the input transformers, in terms of the master section and how that sounds. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of things, but that's absolutely an amazing process. There's a lot of people working on that at the minute. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned and keep your eye on this page. Now, if you made it this far into the video, you're an absolute superstar. This is building blocks. You don't have to have that much expensive gear to just set that up. It's all organizing stuff. It's all per, um, just making sure that you know where you're headed. Now, as you can see with me, I've got like everything spaced out in the different things. This is also modular, not modular as in modular synthesizer, but modular as in its setup. So the subsequent can go and it can be something else. And that just gives me flexibility if I want to travel. And I'm not so sure if, if I'm going to that country, my gear is going to just like make it. I'll just condense stuff down, you know? And in the end, um, even if it has to be done, uh, and it could be a skeleton setup of something you throw in your backpack, but if you work this routine, you should be sweet and fly. Now, um, thank you for watching. Uh, I'd like to say, uh, yeah, peace out. It's a birthday cake for this man now, and uh, catch you next week on another video. I'm Animal Kitchen, thank you for watching. Peace! Thank you.